Hello everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore and today I am sharing this Santa's mailbox with you. Now if you were a subscriber last year to my newsletter, you got the small version of this, which is this one right here. We don't have all these stamps um, anymore. I am using the same stamp. This is the same one I'm using. We do have that but we do not have this little North Pole delivery or the Santa seal anymore. But um, I made this version last year from exclusively for my newsletter subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my newsletter. I am not doing the 12 weeks of Christmas this year. However, I do exclusive projects once a month for my newsletter subscribers. So anyway, I may re-release re this to the general public. Um, those who are not on my newsletter subscriber, I may release this and then you can use whatever um, stamp sets that you have to decorate it with. But I love the big version because I think this would be so cute to have like some of those um, mints or peppermints in here or just any kind of candy would be a really cute gift for your mailman or for your friends or neighbors but it's just super cute I really like this one and this measures four inches it is um, one and a half wide and then it is the box part is four inches tall so it's really a good size and I did use my little magnets for this and it just closes really nicely with the magnet. So let's get started. This may be a little bit longer because we're doing a lot of embossing on this. And I am using Real Red this time. That one is Cherry Cobbler. But I thought I'd do one in Real Red so you could see what the Real Red looks like. You do need 12 by 12 cardstock for this. Now I'm using the um, Stampin' Up! does carry it in the color families. And we did have one year um, real red in at Christmas time a pack of real red but the 12 by 12 we don't have it this year so I do have um, still 12 by 12 left but you can get it in our color families all right so this piece is 8 by 11 and a half now you're going to use almost a full piece um, the other piece you're going to need is five and a half by four this is for the back of it and this is the piece that was there now the only piece you're not using is this piece right here so save that for another project but you're almost using a full 12 by 12 for this so this is for the back this is for the box the inside piece this is one or no this one's seven eighths by three and seven eighths um, you do need a piece of whisper white scrap for the tag that we're going to put on this one and then you'll need a piece that is one half by one and a half and this is for the little front tab like the lock of the of the mailbox all right so let's get started scoring and stuff with this I'm going to tell you all the stamp sets I used for this I did use a few and for the top of the mailbox we are going to use the Magnolia memory dies and it's this one from this die set. So this is the top, this is for the back of the box. I am also using this die right here and this is from our mini keepsake box. Um, oh, that's a big mouthful. All right, so then the stamp sets that we're using for this and I'm using the perfectly plaid. I'm using, of course, the North Pole delivery. This makes the box. And then I'm also using this one from the Christmas Countdown. This is a new one. And you've seen me use this a lot because I love this one. And then this is from last year. It's the Dashing Deer. And this is the one that I'm using for underneath the North Pole delivery. So we're going to do a lot of embossing. So let's go ahead and get started scoring this. Let me grab my Simply Scored real quick. And we are going to score this on the 11 and a half side. And we're going to score this at one half. At four and a half. At six. And at ten. You're going to turn it, and I'm going to score it at one, 
at two and a half, and at six and a half. And that is all your scoring. All right, so now let's get to cutting this. And what we're going to do, this half inch side is going to be our glue tab. So we're going to cut down here all this little rectangle down there off. And then we're going to cut these off right here. And then we are going to cut these two on this end and now you only want to cut the ones there on next to the glue tab this one right here you can do this on your trimmer if you feel like you can cut it straighter these scissors are so great for this and then we're going to cut down each one of these okay now we are going to cut these down and these are going to be our inside flaps. And then this down here is the bottom of our box, so we are going to cut these. Alright, so that is all of our cutting right there. That's what it's going to look like. Let me get rid of a little bit of this so it's not all over the place. I am going to use my corner router and round the corners of this. This is going to be the top flap. Didn't do a very good job of that one. There we go. And then we are going to emboss this. Now the first thing we're going to do, this is going to fold this way. So this is going to be the front of our box. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen all these before I forget to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our classic label punch and we're going to center this here in the center and you are going to cut your little mailbox hole and then we are going to emboss this first and then we'll emboss the front so let me get out my embossing buddy and get this all de-embossed <laughs> i'm going to do the front while i have this out I'm going to use Versamark, and by the way, did I tell you this one is real red and that one is Cherry Cobbler. I wanted to show you a little bit different, um, see which one you like the best. And we are going to stamp this. Just center it in the center there. And I'm going to grab my white emboss. I want to lose my jar for that. That's why I pulled it out because it rolls all over the place. All right, and let's go ahead and emboss that one. Okay, so we have the front embossed. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And now we're going to go ahead and do the front. Now for the front one, I did take a pencil and mark this. Um, you don't want to go too high because the little flap's going to flap over. So I'm just going to, this is four inches and the, the width of the stamp, the North Pole delivery is three inches. So I'm going to mark a half inch on each side and I'm going to make sure that I'm inside those two marks. I can erase those later. I just want to make sure I can get this straight. All right, so we're going to do the North Pole delivery. And then 
we're going to do this little flowered thing next. I think marking it really will help you to keep it straight and to keep it centered. All right. So then we're going to use our white emboss again and emboss this. So let's go. All right, so now we have the front embossed. I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to erase those two little dots I made. And then we are ready to put this together. First thing, do not forget to punch your hole before you do all this. It will help you a whole bunch. And then, I don't know if you noticed, but when you... Um, when I'm embossing, I'll emboss, I'll heat and heat the back side and the front, and it tends to keep your cardstock even. That's just a little pointer. Um, I learned that from somebody else. That's why I'm sharing that. We're going to use some tear and tape for this. I'm going to put that on here. And we want to make sure that we line this up really good because this is not how I usually do my boxes. I don't usually close them in the front, but this was the only way that I could figure out how to get this embossing and everything on it the way I wanted it. So make sure it's lined up really good. Then you're going to fold these in and we're going to fold this one. I'll use some more tear and tape on here. And I'm going to add a couple pieces in case I put anything heavy. You want to make sure that it is it stays closed. Okay. Make sure you got it nice and square. And then you can run your foam folder in there. All right, so now we're ready to do our little closure. So I need that little piece that I have that I cut right here. I'm going to round these corners too. And we are going to, I'm going to use wet glue. And I'm going to go ahead and do this right now so that it's all stuck together before I get the magnet and all that on. So just center it there in the middle. And then I'm going to grab my other piece of real red that we cut. And I'm going to round the corners of this piece. And you really don't even have to put this in. I just thought it looked nicer with a piece in there over that little white piece there. We're going to add this. So you're just going to line that up here. And it just looks cleaner to me that way. All right, so we are going to use our little magnets for this. I think I made this one a little bit longer. It looks longer. I think it's okay though. Yeah, we're going to go with that. All right. Now, okay, so now we're going to use these magnets. These are the same magnets I always use. It's the basic gray magnetic discs. I get them on Amazon. You need one positive and one negative. These two, they stuck together. They wanted to get together right away. <laughs> And those are two positives actually, so we need to put one of those back. We need a negative to go with that one. I don't know why that one wants to stick. And it does have adhesive on these. I really like these for this um, type of box. So 
So we're going to put this one on. Remove the little backing for the sticky. Sometimes I'll add some wet glue to this. Um, these are really sticky, so I am going to put one right here. And then this one we're going to attach. Oops, sorry about that. I got some glue there. And take this backing off. And then we'll just press this down on here. I need to put that down far enough, so I need to pull that up. I made that a little bit too long. I'm going to go ahead and cut that a little bit, just a little bit. And then round those, if I can round those. Now I'm going to have to round it by hand now. You don't even have to round those corners, but I just like them rounded. Just made it a little bit too long. Still have to move that. right there and then we're going to put this one on and we're going to press that down just enough to get it to attach if I can I gotta get my finger in there there we go and then press these really really solidly so they stick so there we go now I'm using one of our faceted um, gems these clear faceted gems and I'm going to use the larger one and I'm going to go ahead and color that with my real red. The other one I used cherry cobbler on it. But I'm going to use the real red this time and be careful with your tip. Don't press really hard on it because you don't want to mess up your um, blend. But you can color any clear jewel with with these. All right, so now for the back, we are going to use our five and a half by four piece, and we're going to use this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut this other out of the whisper white so that we can do our little tag at the same time. So let's bring up the big shot. And this one, we're going to line it up like this. I'm going to grab a little piece of sticky note here so I can get these this on here. And just line it up to the top. And then let's cut this one at the same time, the little tag. You can use whatever you have for your tag. I love these little stitch tags, though. So here's our little back that's going to go on there. And then we have our little tag all ready to go to stamp. Alright, let's get this out of the way and then we'll finish this up. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to the back of this. And then we're going to line this up. And this does have a little bit of a design here, so we want to make sure that's on the front. And you're just going to attach this on the back. Just line it right up. And there it is. And then we're going to just stamp our little tag and put our little tag on there. And I'm using the Believe, and I'm going to do that in Memento Black. And then I'm going to use real red for our little poinsettia. I'm just going to put that right there. I'm going to grab some a ribbon, which is the eighth inch whisper white. And we're going to string this through here. And I want enough to make a bow, a little bow. And then I am going to punch a little hole with my little hole punch. And I'm just going to punch it right there. It's almost the exact same size as the... Oh, and I need to add my little charm. I'm using the little charms from the Bird Ballad 
um, that coordinate with the bird ballad. I need, a, I need some help getting that through. There we go. And these are so cute. They're little trinkets. And I'm using a little key, so it's like the key to the mailbox. But this has flowers and leaves. These are really cute. And it's real antique looking. And I really like that about it. So we're going to put the little key on. This is the tricky part. It's going to be right on there. And then we're going to tie a little bow. like that. I'm going to trim that just a little bit. And there you have it. There's the real red one. Here's the cherry cobbler. They're so cute. I really like this one. I hope you enjoy it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. I hope you all have a blessed one. If you need any supplies, you can go to my blog at stampingwithamore.com and shop for my blog. Have a blessed one, every, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye.